the villainy of pop-up tents. I remember the heady days of camping out in the great wilderness beyond the city, where you got to experience nature at its finest. However, it's all very well being exposed to the sunshine, and the like, but at night when the sun goes away, and all the scary things come out to play, you want to be hidden safe and secure in your flimsy fabric tent, so the venomous owls and forest octopuses can't get you. The problem is that first you had to lug this 150 kilograms arrangement of canvas and steel rods halfway across the country, and then when you needed it, when you were really tired, and it was getting dark, you had to spend most of the evening putting the thing up. This required, for the most part, a degree in architecture, a postdoctorate in soft body mechanics, and a small rubber mallet. Imagine then, my joy upon discovering that there was a pop-up tent that one was very light, and two would put itself up. Really? You took it out of its bag, apparently a hula hoop made of plastic and cotton, and tossed it lightly into the air. At which point, it would make a pleasing ashwib noise, and a three-bedroom chateau would immediately appear in front of you. All you had to do was get in. Though, on a windy evening, it was recommended that you nail it down first. This was great. A stylish camping solution for the modern age. Unfortunately, nobody really told you about the downside, that is, putting the three-bedroom chateau back in its little nylon pocket. In the morning, when all you want to do is have a coffee somewhere inside where the porky bears and the knife-wielding fire weevils couldn't get you. I mean, clearly it could be done. That's where it came from, but it required you to have a strong understanding of multidimensional geospatial trigonometry. You need to grasp the base of the pop-up tent firmly at a very specific location, and twist it just so, at which point it transcended the laws of physics and reverted to its tiny two-dimensional form. Of course, it was never that easy. The number of times I gripped it firmly in the wrong place and twisted it in the wrong direction, the myriad of shapes the frame contorted itself into as you wondered how the ad had made it look so easy, some of these shapes were positively Asherian. They didn't actually work in Euclidean space, and suddenly you're not so much putting away an irksome pop-up tent as summoning Cthulhu. Every now and again you'd fluke it, and your tent would be put away beautifully, but for the most part, you end up walking back home through the forest with a mangled bright orange three-bedroom chateau duct tape to your backpack. No amount of pleasing schwib can make up for trying to cram a half-erected tent into the back seat of your car. And this is why I would like to nominate the pop-up tent as today's villain.